We start with the question, who am I? That's the question at the center of all spiritual practices as well as all uh, self-inquiry and memoir writing practices. Who are we? What is this thing that you call your identity? When you lift the veil uh, on this question, who am I? The first thing you recognize is that you are not your story. Human beings are the only animals in all of creation that live with a conceptualized idea of who we are, uh, a self that's separate from the flesh and blood creature that we are. When you see that the story you create about who you are, who you're not, what you should expect of yourself, what you want, what you don't want, is not who you actually are, that is the first step in any spiritual journey of awakening. It's a quantum leap in self-realization to recognize that you are not your story. So how does this narrative form? That's the question. When you look at the background of your life, you see that narrative comes from three different areas. First, it comes from the story that you inherit from the family that you're born into who you're told you are, who you're told uh, about where you came from. So you have that tributary, which is the, the historical self. The second is our, our thoughts and our feelings that we mistake for who we are. We mistake the story that we tell based on our thoughts and our feelings for the flesh and blood creature uh, that we are. And the third is our social self. We take ideas from the society or the culture that we live in, from our environment, uh, and we bring all of these things together and create a narrative of a self that we believe will uh, be functional in the world and, and effective in the world. But this self is a fiction. Every life is a work of fiction. It's an ongoing uh, work of self-creation, of narrative uh, self-creation. And when you see that, it's extremely liberating. So the first thing is lifting the veil on your identity to recognize that who you are uh, is not who you say you are. That this narrative is not the truth. And when you see that, it gives you a lot of freedom. Suddenly you have the distance from uh, the story to uh, be able to ask questions uh, about the assumptions that you make about yourself. Until you have that separation between yourself and your story, uh, you can't ask questions because you're so identified with this, with this narrative, this fictional self. Realizing that that isn't who you are is a breath of fresh air. It's the first moment uh, of liberation in the process uh, of, of writing to awaken. Okay? So asking yourself who you are uh, begins with recognizing that you are not your story. And once you do that, you're able to ask questions about the story itself. And that's enormously empowering. You realize that you're not trapped inside uh, this, this conceptual self. That this conceptual self uh, is, is a creation uh, that has its benefits and we do need story to navigate through our lives, but it's not the ultimate truth. In the same way that your body is not your ultimate truth, but you need it to navigate through the world, uh, your story is not the ultimate truth. It's something that is changeable, it's something that is self-created, uh, and it's something that comes essentially from the imagination. Okay. And once you've lifted the veil and looked at the fact that you are not your story, uh, it's important to go into the areas of yourself that you've been afraid to look at before, which is entering the shadow, touching on the shadow. Now, what is the shadow? The shadow, of course, comes from Jungian psychology. It's the parts of ourselves that we either deny or disclaim, that we're afraid of, that threaten us in some way, that don't uh, fit in to the narrative that we want to present about ourselves. Whatever doesn't fit into this story, uh, that you want to project in the world gets put into the shadow. And until we start to look in that shadow, we can't bring in or integrate the parts of ourselves that we have uh, disclaimed, that we have separated ourselves from. And it's also important to know that the shadow itself contains not only shame uh, and fear and, and the things that, that we can't stand looking at, the shadow also contains our gifts. We put into the shadow, as I said, everything that doesn't fit into this version of the self that we are trying to project into the world. So if you were told, for instance, that uh, in order to be a respectable person, you need to be a doctor or a lawyer, 
uh, but you're a poet at heart, uh, you will put your poetry into the shadow. Uh, if, for instance, you're not allowed uh, your own lifestyle, your own sexuality, the thing that touches you uh, into your deepest passion, you will put that into the shadow. And that's how it's so easy for us to become uh, cut off from our essential selves because they don't fit into the narrative uh, that is acceptable uh, and that fits into the safe, uh, secure uh, version of ourselves that we want to live. So until we look into the shadow, we can't integrate uh, the yin and the yang, the dark and the light, the unacceptable uh, with the, the, the daytime self. So that's important to touch into the shadow if we hope to answer this question, who am I? Otherwise, we're not looking, we're missing half of who we are. Okay? And this is challenging work. It's challenging to look into the shadow. We negate things and deny things for a reason. And in doing this shadow work, uh, we also come up against the reasons why we have put certain aspects of ourselves into the shadow, which brings us in touch with our shame. It brings us in touch with our, our fear. Uh, it brings us in touch with the parts of ourselves that, that we have a hard time accepting. Those are the very aspects of self that need to be integrated. Okay, so touching the shadow is a Im very important part uh, of asking the question, who am I? Otherwise, we, we stay on the surface uh, and we just we tell the, we tell the uh, acceptable version of things and we don't get into the, the, the juicy parts, the parts that are, are underneath and that are actually running us in ways that we're not aware of. Okay, so touching into the shadow is absolutely critical. Uh, and the way we do that is that we become aware of the witness inside us that is not the story that is not the shadow. When we talk about seeing your true face in the mirror, I'm talking about becoming aware of the witness consciousness. Now, different spiritual traditions have different uh, explanations for what the witness consciousness is. It's the aspect of us that is able to look at our own minds. Psychologists call it metacognition. There's a part of you that is not in your thought process, that's able to observe your thought process. And that's the same part of you that can observe the story that you're telling. Okay? We strengthen our witness consciousness by doing this writing practice. In the same way that we strengthen witness consciousness when we uh, do meditation or when you do any other kind of contemplative practice. It's stepping out of the stream of the mind uh, to take the larger view. And when you do that, it's very expansive. It's very uh, enlarging and, and empowering. So whatever it takes to become aware of your witness self, the, the part that isn't caught in the fiction that you tell yourself about yourself, um, is critical uh, to self-inquiry of all kinds and particularly to this writing practice. Every time you sit down to ask yourself deep questions in writing and to practice self-inquiry, uh, you are strengthening your witness consciousness. That's the wisdom mind. It's the part of you that knows without knowing quite how you know. It's the part of you that's free even in the midst of, of circumstances that, that, that may be uh, oppressive, uh, fear-creating, uh, or limiting. The witness is not limited. The witness is not afraid. The witness is not trapped by the fiction. And that's the essential difference. When you ask the question, who am I, you separate out the part of yourself that is free uh, from the part of yourself that's imprisoned by your narrative. And when you do that, you have access to great amounts of wisdom uh, and power and courage. Because if you believe that you're your story, if, you re if you're so identified with your narrative uh, that there's no separation, you won't have the courage to ask these deep questions. It's only when you step back enough to know that you are not this small, fear-bound, um, driven, obsessive, uh, neurotic self uh, that you are able to ask yourself the kinds of challenging questions that will set you free uh, on this path. So it begins with lifting the veil, understanding that your story uh, is created as an adaptation to your environment. Uh, that we make a conceptualized uh, version of ourselves uh, that we wear like a mask in the world, recognizing that that's not who you are. That's the first step. Then we look into the shadow aspects uh, of this personality that we've created and the parts that we have denied uh, of ourselves in order to begin to integrate those into 
our self-image and our self-understanding. And finally, recognizing that it is the witness that is the tool for doing this work. That without the ability to step back uh, and to uh, access the consciousness that isn't bound by the narrative, um, we, we can never uh, free ourselves. We can never gain insight. That's where the perspective comes from, uh, recognizing that the witness is always there. This is the eternal self uh, that doesn't change. Uh, it's the field that everything else happens inside. Okay. So that's how we begin this uh, process of asking who am I uh, as we write to awaken.